Hey, what's up, you guys? It is Emo Shoddy, and I'm here with my friend. Introduce yourself. Elvis Tal with the one and hey. only Emo Shoddy. Aren't you like, uh, how do y'all say it? Hmong? Legend? The H Among, is silent. Hmong legend. H Hmong. H Hmong legend. The okay. The no, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard on these streets. You're this legend. So I'm like, okay. Oh my god. Um, no, I'm serious. I'm so <laughs> serious. Anyway, okay. So today we're talking about dating and the whole A and B W stuff. We're gonna talk about just regular dating too in general. So first question before we get started on the topic. I mean, it's. It's still on the topic. How do you feel about women right now going through the decentering men, grieving men phase while while this dating situation is going down? So if you're not familiar with grieving men, basically women are completely shunning the idea of the kind of love men have given us for centuries. And the manufactured love we've seen on TV, music videos, all that. And how is that affecting the dating game? And it's not the same as a radical feminist. Like a radical feminist is someone that doesn't believe in love, doesn't care for guys. They're using the same psychological and, and, and manipulative tactics men have used on women, on men. But women that are grieving men, decentering men, they were the women that still believed in love. But now are like, yeah, no, the same. Explain like, explain decentering, like, like being the center of the world or something. Yeah, so like the center of the world, their center of affections, or it's it's like if they don't have a man, they don't feel validated. They make the their man, their aesthetic, their personality, <laughs> all that. So how do you feel like that affects the dating game now that you kind of know what it means? But you're saying it's kind of um, cliched by like what we see fabricated on television as well, right? So, yeah. so when you say that, you're saying like um, that kind of brands what a man should be, and, and and what you're getting compared to what what you're seeing on the television are two different things, right? Um, Not just that, but like in real life, because women have tried to fit the patriarchal standard of what a woman should be and then they still get spat in their face so then they're just like what's the point of even doing this anymore yeah no i get it i mean i think it's accountability on all ends you know like i mean with with me i always tell women like <laughs> you know i'm the same with with i'm the same thing with weddings right like like to me love love is fabricated i look at women like you know i i'm 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 a believer that love is never enough right love is always the ultimate goal it's always the ultimate uh, ultimatum it's what we strive for, it's goals. But I mean, just like goals takes discipline, responsibility, integrity, dignity. And so love is not enough. Love without finances, love without, uh, you know, having your shit together. You know, like you can have wedding bills all like, you know, like all day and like, oh yeah, we did the wedding thing and that's cool. But it's like, dude, I can give a shit less about a wedding. You know what I mean? It's like, I can show more love and affection just as a human being. And to me, build a foundation and, you know, let all that speak for itself. I think women want wedding bells and, you know, because that's what gets them all, you know, jittery inside and stuff. And that's cool. And then men kind of just service and cater to that. But I don't think we really, you know what I mean? We don't really care for that. We just want to build a foundation, move forward and have a long, sustainable life. And it's the same thing. And, and, and it actually gives men a reason to be lazy too. Like they got a trophy wife and like, you know, I mean, once you put the ring on it, you're good. And so, I mean, I, I think all of that is the fabrication of like, ooh, this big, you know, like romantic setting where it's, I'm, it, which is very important, but I'm saying like all of that could be, you know. It could um, just be smoke and mirrors basically. Yeah, I, I I never buy into it. It's like it's all the fluff, but it's not the actual crux of like what a relationship is, which is a hundred percent true. Now, but people also hear what they want to hear and see what they want to see, so they get right. this fabricated sense of love, and it's like, dude, love is hard work. Like relationships are hard work. Just do the work. So, do you think that? 
because of that dating, at least for people that are on dating apps, mm -hmm. they are pretty much like kind of asked out. They are in there wasting their time, especially for like our, um, our community, like the black women, the Afro Latin woman, the Asian, the East Asian, South Asian. What's that looking like for them? Girl, I don't online date much, which I should, but I actually think that's a better route. You know, there's this is less gimmicky. There's less run around, uh, you know, what? like well, like you're not wasting each other's time. What what I'm saying is when you build a profile, you know what you're getting. You know what I mean? But uh -uh. Uh -uh. you tripping because on dating apps, it is so much. I, mean, I know people lie. It's so much easier to put the blindfold on somebody. You can literally add subtract uh, put a fake photo that's what i there. get but 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 what i'm saying is that you're you know like when you're giving something attention at least it's all laid down for you like i said people lie and they do fabricate it and so you know that's on the human being and that's the error part but to me you know i'd rather look at a profile and be like okay who, who you know what's this girl about who, you know what she's done blah blah and, and then make my decision on it the only thing is people just ain't honest that's that's really what ain't happening but well, 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 what i'm saying is it helps me you know to differentiate right like when i'm choosing what music i listen to or what, what movies i watch you know I, I i want the package there so that i know that this is you know i'm gonna spend my two hours watching this or you know my five minutes listening to, to this like so i know what i'm getting uh, and, and that's a very honest approach it, because when I do that, I actually, you know, I, 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 I go through some really good stuff. So with woman, you know, I mean, if, if they come correct, I almost feel like I'm wasting a lot more time doing the in-person stuff. But again, I haven't online dated too much, so I'm, I'm very sociable. So <laughs> it is what it is, but I'm also picky. So I do select what I feel is normally the right woman. I, I, I don't, women don't really waste my time as much, so. You told me that you recently went to a mixer of some sorts. Was it like a, what was it? Like those fast dating things where people yeah, just want there to hang out? Yeah, just want there to hang out. Yeah, it's stuff I, it's stuff that I, I went to, you know, once in a while, a long time ago. Uh, you know, I, I, I did it for fun. It was a good time. I'm um, just cool to see my community do it. Like we talk about, we're so behind sometimes and. You know, like among dating, Asian dating, sometimes it's still so traditional. So it's kind of like, hey, this is cool. You know, break you guys out of the norm a little bit because I feel like, I don't know, they, they need more action, you know. Um, again, I just want to check out the scene because I want to see how are my you saying, Are you saying they need more action because they're just so traditional and they don't really know how to like go about... Explore. <laughs> yeah. Adventure. And it's like, like... To me, I still get like speed dating is still like a sense of like, you know, going outside of the box. But to me, I was like, that's kind of like really typical. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. Like how, how do we get past this point? How do we evolve even further? You know, I'm not encouraging other types of relationships, like what we're going to talk about later. But at the same time, I do wish we explored a little more. Number one, number two, I feel like the young ones are, you know, dating has become more sociable. It's a more lifestyle thing now. And, you know, and, and the young ones are probably delving more into that, but because, you know, the, 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 like our generation, we don't speak up about it or we haven't gone through it. So it's kind of like, who, who do the teens, the youth really speak up to, or, you know, or look forward to, to give them some advice and things like that. So I feel like I should probably talk more <laughs> so that, you know, I, so so that, you know, my tribe can find me, I guess. There's a lot of people out there that are talking. It's just that there isn't enough representation of Asians. Yeah, in your yeah, own community. They, right. They like want to for, speak to someone that looks like them. For like Afro-Latinas and Black women, we have a lot of women that are coming up yeah. And and giving great advice. Yeah, y'all got plans. But and some Afro Latinas, because they pass for just African American, you wouldn't know that they're Afro Latinas. So they speak to, you know, all the women of color. You know, they speak to all those women. And they're giving good advice. But what I'm noticing is though, there is this advice kind of floating around in the internet that is very much centered on humbling men and the thing is i'm not saying men can't be humbled 
but they're using a lot of the same tactics, like I said earlier, of what men used to do to women or what men do to women. And they're using it against guys, but they're not realizing that they're turning into the same dudes that they hate, right? And that's actually ruining the dating situation for themselves, not because they can't get action, but because then they're gonna create this huge disconnect between themselves and what they actually want, which is to date putting on, men. Putting on that armor. Yeah. Yeah, trying to I would it. say instead, like, it's okay to have boundaries and protect yourself, but if no. you're going to be this psychologically, um, I don't know, manipulative and also kind of angry, angry and bitter, it's better, it's better that you just don't date, you know, and don't date when you're bitter, don't date when you're trying to go out there and humble dudes, just stay away from dudes. Stay away from them for a while. It's like okay. sometimes, like the woman play the masculine role, you know. Um, but sometimes that has a lot to do with men, because let's be honest, they be soft as hell too, right? So that's like it's kind of like when women feel, you know, well they they feel obligated to to, to play that role, or it's their way to you know kind of shoot a man down. And yeah, it's weird to be honest. But at the same time, it's like I get why they do it. But it's yeah, just, I get it a hundred percent. Men need to step but, up too on that end, to be honest. Right. <laughs> a but lot I just of don't think it's safe for women to put themselves in those situations because some men, even though they may look, you know, like the quiet, chill guy, might be the guy that might punch you in the face. Yeah. Because he feels like you totally disrespected him, though it's wrong that he did what he did. If you know that men are natural born predators you do not put yourself in a situation where a man can prey on you oh, regardless that, of how much psychological game you have because mm -hmm. your strength isn't equal to his i do want to know like you know so so what other dating lifestyles have you you know like do you practice right um because you're you're dating right now or you're single like let's what, so, what, what do you identify as as far as where you're at right now well, I'm polyamorous. Mm -hmm. um, I've been with my primary partner for seven years. And the, okay. so my secondary partner, we broke up in June of last year. No, was it June? Yes, it was June or, or a little bit before that. Anyways, um, and I haven't dated anyone else since that, just because I'm still kind of like, healing from that breakup like even though i'm happy in my primary relationship that's all good and dandy i still when i step into you know when i step into thinking about what i had with that person i sometimes ponder it and go man what what a doozy you know and it, and, it, and i still i'm still kind of processing it you know because Breaking up with him was, it was something I just had to do. I just had to do it. And, um, but it, it, it still kind of makes me a little sad that I had to do it because we had a really, we had really good chemistry connection and we could communicate very well. And there was a lot of attraction and, uh, I was very supportive towards him. He was very supportive towards me. It, we had a lot of great qualities together. Unfortunately, though, having these great qualities, I mean, it doesn't change that foundationally. We don't understand our attachment. Well, I understand his attachment style, but my attachment style is a little more secure than his. And so to try and, and help an avoidant person become a secure attachment is just not my job. They have to realize that that's something they have to work on or they're going to lose relationships with either romantic or friendship. And that's just like, it's not for me to fix. That's a personal thing that they have to deal with. And it has to do a lot with like trusting other people and feeling safe. And what the fu what am I going to do? Beat you? Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, I've already done everything to show you that you can trust me. And if that's not enough, then... I'd rather go. So let me, first of all, see, I come from a community that really doesn't understand these different 
types of lifestyles, right? Um, mm -hmm. Can you can you explain even what a polyamorous is? Because if I tell my people that, they're like, oh, what's that? I don't even know what that is. So, you know, sadly, like it's a pretty, I think, typical term. But, you know, I, I think if you go to a lot of monks and say poly, they won't even know what the hell that is. So explain it. Well, at least what it is to me, polyamory is you have the emotional, mental, financial, intellectual bandwidth to love another person without that interfering with your other romantic relationships. You could love plural people, multiple people, and okay. commit and commit to those people. And it's not a hookup thing. It's not swingers. It's not um, casual sex. It's not that. It's you can be in love and in committed. E equally? For, yeah. Okay. You can, you, you can do it. You have the capacity for it. You don't feel like you're being split in half when you do right. it or split in three or four. You feel like, I just can't. That's it. So the last guy you were talking about, the secondary guy. So at this point, it was just two guys? Or was, was yeah, it that point? just two. And now you're back to one. Yeah. Momentarily exclusive. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and like... Have I considered dating a second person? No, not because I don't want to, but because, like I said, I'm still kind of at this point, right? Yeah, like I don't know if two years from now I feel differently, but like I'm still sort of healing through that. So I'm just like, mm, no. let me ask you this briefly: How long have you been poly? My whole life. Oh, life. Okay. When's the last time you actually been single? I mean, like exclusive to one person. So, when's the last time you can think of it? <laughs> so, I've been exclusive with a, a guy I dated like back in 2013. So, it's been 10 years. Okay. So, I was exclusive with him. And we were about, we were together two years. And then the guy, no. And then like a guy that I dated after that, I was with him for a year. I was exclusive with him. And then my current partner, we were exclusive. Even though I'm poly, we were exclusive the first four years. Like I did not even consider practicing polyamory until we had a strong baseline of trust. Like I couldn't just, I couldn't just go ahead and like, Especially when the people, you, if you date people that are monogamous and they know you're poly, you can't just like throw yourself into a poly relationship. You have right. to respect and build a trust with them right. that when you do have a secondary partner or whatever partners you want, it does not affect your primary relationship at all. Not to say that there's no, nothing that affects the primary relationship. I'm just saying that they're just like, oh no, I trust my partner completely. Everything's good. Like my partner is always on point, no matter what. Doesn't matter if there's someone in the picture. Is that the longest? Four years being exclusive? With with my with primary partner? With anyone. Yeah, four, four years exclusive. Sometimes well, I don't know if Crystal can take that ride for that long. So, you know, that's cool. Well, like I know how to be realistic though. Like. I've had boyfriends where I'm just like, hey, like I can be exclusive for you with you for 10 years and that's it. I've had a hard time with it too, so I, I get it. Like I've been able to say, no, with you, I could only be exclusive four years. With you, I could only be exclusive five. Like I know who I could be exclusive with for how long? Now, if you're willing to reveal it, um, how many guys at one time? Like what's what was the most? What was your cap like? Oh, I, I only two. two do, like that's it. Oh, you don't do more than two guys? No. No. Oh, okay. No. I'm because I don't I don't have the bandwidth for it. Like I just okay. don't. Like okay. some people can have three, four, five, four. I can't do it. No, it's just a plus I, one. Okay, cool. Just a plus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean that ain't too bad. That's the main but thing. But yeah, like. Some people think polyamory is about hookups. It's about this or that. Yeah. Like, what do you say me, to them? I tell them, listen, for some people, people a different perspective. Yeah. Go ahead. For some people, sure. It's about hookups because they're not getting their needs met in their yeah. relationship. 
for me, it's just, I just fall in love with somebody and like I allow myself to fall in love with somebody and that's it. It's not right. a matter of, oh, they're so hot, let's hook up and like turn it into something. It's like, no, legit, like I have some deep, strong feelings for you because we've built a great friendship and I can see this going somewhere, but I'm not going to sacrifice my primary relationship for it. See, the the hard thing in my community is that, you know, you can't really call it polyamory because we grew up, we uh, we grew up in a very uh, patriarchal system, you know, where the husbands are, you know, force themselves into these uh, dual marriages and things like that. So it's kind of like I I can do it, but you can't do it, and it's like you know, a second wife, you know, to kind of serve the man, and it, so it's more dominance and control and things like that. So I don't ever think we really practiced it right if, you know, at all. So it's a very different thing with us, um, you know, because I know some of my people are going to criticize like, oh, two partners, blah, blah. We've been through that all our lives. Well, not really. We ha It's not consensual. We never really practiced it in a respectful way. And so it's, it's you know, th there's an imbalance of power there. So it's never really, you know, you're you you're never really seen it done happily, right? Like we've hung around enough polyamorous people where it's like they actually have really healthy relationships. No one's mm -hmm. no no one's dominant or controlled over the others. So, you know, and, you know, it's it's a different experience for us, right? Where people yeah. might be, would probably hate, hate it because they grew up seeing, you know, the abuse, you know. Because it can be abusive. You gotta be very mm -hmm. careful. <clears throat> yeah, like my partners, I allow them to have other partners like it's not even that i allow them it's just that is their right their body belongs to them as long as you're protecting yourself getting tested regularly taking care of your body not treating yourself like trash and treating your other partners like trash perfect because the last thing i want to do or the last thing i want to hear is that you're treating a girl that you're having a relationship with like trash because that lets me know what kind of soul you have you're not about to treat her like trash, buy me a diamond necklace and not buy her a diamond necklace. You got me fucked up. What? You're not about to buy me a brand new car, not buy her a brand new car. Are you wallet? No. Like I am yeah. very much like treat everybody well. You're not about to use her for her body. Absolutely not. You're going to go out with her. You're going to spend time with her. You're going to get to know her pain. You're going to get to know her happies and her whatever. And treat her like a human being, treat her with respect. And if I even have to have that conversation with you, uh, you gotta go. Right, so, <laughs> so, you're, so you're respectful. You want the equality, you want her to be loved. You don't want to step in the way of her, you know, freedom and, and, and treatment. You, you know, yeah. Uh, so once you start to feel primary, uh, you know, and dominant in a relationship, it, it, you do, actually don't like that, right? Be or, or what? Because most people would be like, hell no, I'm, I'm, you know, I better get more attention over her or him. Right. So well, I, because yeah. if the attention is balanced, then it's not an issue. Now, if you're with this other person and now you're not picking up my phone calls, you're not showing up on time, you're canceling our dates, you're, you know, holding back on the love and the care and affection, then I'm going to be like, you know what? If that person is more of a primary partner to you, either you can, we could all sit down at the round table and decide where we are at in this relationship, or you can make that person your significant other, and like you guys could be monogamous together, whatever works for you. But I'm just not going to sacrifice the the my boundaries and my needs because this new partner came into the picture. That's it. Right. But if it's in reverse and she's starting to get, or, and you're getting too much attention and, and being too spoiled over the other girl, you don't like that neither, right? No, I'm going to have a conversation with my partner privately and be like, I'm reading the signs. I'm seeing how she feels. I don't think this is appropriate. No, it's not fair. If you're trying to have a relationship with both of us, that's it. Like if I'm reading the signs and then we're having open dialogue about, Maybe she's not talking to him about it. Maybe she's talking to me about it, you know? And I'm just like, all right, I got to talk to homeboy. <laughs> Listen, you know, uh, Lucy says X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. You got to figure that out because if you don't want to lose her as a friend or as a, 
as a partner, this is what you got to do. But the fact that I even got to talk to you about it means that you're not in touch. You're not in touch. Should you even be in this? Right. So that's a very respectful, yeah, respectful approach. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I, yeah. and it's very dangerous because people have come to me about poly relationships and stuff too. You know, I can't even say that I'm really poly. You know, I mean, I do date around and I date socially as a lifestyle, things like that. But I've never really done it with an actual partner partner, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've done it while, you know, like, I mean, I've dated, mul you know, I'm, I'm always dating multiple people at multiple times. But I, you know, not not when, you know, I'm in a committed relationship and I really, you know, I think poly, the definition is really, you know, being in a multiple committed relationship, not just dating multiple people, you know, yeah. dating around. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very different approach. I do have people try to like have me give them advice, but I'm like, just <laughs> be very, very honest. I, I don't ever encourage it because I don't think people can stomach it. I don't think they have enough, thick enough skin. I don't think they gonna, you know, they, they gonna do the right things and play the game right. And so for me, it's just like, like, first of all, not, not my, my number one advice is stay away. <laughs> my number two advice is if you must, yeah, I can at least share with you the experiences that, you know, I, I've seen because I've been around it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, who knows? I can probably be one myself. I just haven't been there. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been sure. asked in the group. I've been asked in the group, hey, can you share yeah, like, exactly. your poly? And I'm just like, this is a monogamous group. I'm not going right. to talk about my poly. Like, I can. Once what group is that? Aphrasiac. Like, I can, I can write stuff in the group like once every six months about my relationship but i do not talk about poly stuff often because it's a monogamous group and i respect that 100 percent. that lifestyle is not for the weak so you run two dating uh, uh social pages right no just one. Oh, latinas and asian men that's not you oh yeah yeah i do actually you're right i have afroasiac latinas and then i have the uh, Afroasiac for Black, Latin, and Asian dating. Okay, so Afroasiac dating, Latinas, and Asian men, and she has me moderate that those pages with her. Um, mm -hmm. They're some fun pages, and they're uh, you know people love that there's a platform for them, you know, to uh, you mm -hmm. know go out of the way and have uh, you know some real uh, discussions and things. So if you're ever you know interested in those backgrounds, interracial dating. Uh, we encourage it come in i'm always promoting it too so you know and yeah I, and i do a lot of I the appreciate that. Too. <laughs> i appreciate that um but like i feel like in general i don't even care if like okay so like for me it's just like i want everybody to just find the person that loves them right doesn't matter if they're asian black white latino middle eastern like i don't care just find the right person for you. And right now the dating scene is so plagued with, you know, the red pill guys and the alpha male podcasts. And, you know, like I heard recently that men are literally downloading apps so they can swipe right on women and then curse them out if they match. Yeah. Why would, like, that's going to make women not want to be on the apps. Uh, so I'm why do that? That doesn't make sense to me. So you've been into Asian men for quite some time, right? Yeah, since like, since I mean, I've been into like every guy, of course, yeah, every right, race. Right. But when, but when, Asian, Asian when did guys, you delve like into I, like Asian men? Honestly, like, I grew up thinking that Asian guys were super masculine, just because like I used to watch a lot of martial arts, mm -hmm. and so I used to always be like, oh yeah, that's like creme de la creme guy like he's gonna protect me and he has perfect hair and he has pretty eyes so in my head i always pictured them as athletic art artistry you know like artsy mm. you know good looking great jaw lines like like in my in my head it was always just the majestic like <laughs> so it's opposite of the stereotype be. Wow. Yeah, opposite of a stereotype. So, like, when people started talking about the stereotype of Asian guys, I was like, "What?" Right. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't see get that at it. all. Right. I didn't get it at all until like the K-pop situation started popping off, and this is like around 2013 where I started noticing girls um, 
wearing book bags with like these k-pop idols on it i didn't know they were k-pop idols but i was like oh who are those guys they're super cute they're like oh they're k-pop and i'm like k-pop what's that and they're like you know korean pop yeah this is this and this is that and i'm like oh my the god young girls are starting to love that too huh but the young girls are starting to love that too they like the pretty the pretty guys yeah, well, the, this was like a 19 year old and this is I was around 23, mm. 24 at the time and she was 19. And so she was so into it, a white girl and right. um, very cute girl. And then I just was like, I went online and I looked it up. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And they're, they are cute. OK. And then that's when I slowly started kind of. Well, I was already dating a, I was dating a South Asian guy. So it wasn't like, I wasn't like familiar with Asians and stuff, but, and I had already dated an East Asian guy. So it's like, it's never been like new to me. And those, are, just, and, and, and those sometimes are polar opposites, right? A South yeah. and East Asian, like you get yeah. two completely different things, right? right? Yeah. But like when I saw the K-pop thing, I was just like, oh, this is like a, this is a whole new it's thing. New. What? And then around 2016, that's when I started really looking at it like, huh, this is something that is going to tumble. This and is going to turn. Yeah. And then, new, Cause I was, yeah. uh, I was cruising on La Brea one time in, uh, uh, you know, uh, right in the middle of Hollywood and I pulled up, there was a whole line of like really young girls, just like fanboy and um you know sitting in line i was like what's going on man and you know i thought you know some some, some big cat was in town you know um i was looking around i was uh, scoping the scene and i was wondering who, who are all these you know it was like 80 percent like white black latina right who was it jay park no it's a, <laughs> and it was like some asian girls too but it was like 80 percent non-asian and it was bts i'm like whoa i'm like the scene has really changed you got all these different ethnicities like here for an asian you know, pop band, and you know, you typically back then you would it, it would be put the other way around, predominantly like eighty percent Asian girls, and then you know you see a good 10, 20 percent of other races. But it was like completely in reverse. So I'm like, well, these parents are gonna have you know something to deal with in this new era if if they don't like their daughters dating Asian men. So you know, when it comes to the the, the K-pop scene, I wasn't entirely into the whole look but you know like g dragon came out i was like okay and then you know K j park was okay his music is like mid but very handsome guy uh -huh. and just like i started really i i kind of started liking that feminine look too so really? just like yeah but i think that you know i like all type of asian guys i like the feminine look i like the jock look i like the nerdy look i don't really yeah, have, same, like, yeah. same with me with girls yeah sure. yeah i don't really have a preference on like what i like them to look like just as long as they have a really pretty face like i'm cool with that um but, but i feel like what what a lot of girls were doing they were they were like fantasizing about how these guys are not knowing that a lot of asian dudes come from really harsh um narcissistic family upbringings and that you know like a lot of girls would be like oh i want a korean guy i'm like do you know like what their background is like a lot of their dads are just oh my god like Killers. you Junkers. emotional constipation narcissism you know very passive aggressive it's yeah, like but... you just yeah, so but so so here's the thing. It's like, you know, there's so much about Asians that don't get televised, you know? You just kind of go by what they sell on television. And so a lot of the girls that I have interracially dated with, like what you said yourself, you've known them to be, you know, masculine, to be hip, to be all these other things, you know? Um, and so I get a lot of, you know, like coming, like a lot of the women I dated have looked at it from your lens right well that's how they see asian men so um you know um being milwaukee is my hometown there's a lot of you know black asian dating here and in the small towns a lot of the white girls love the asian men and so and that's one thing but the other thing is this 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 part definitely doesn't get televised is that these white girls growing up 
they go up thinking that white men are disgusting. Like they they look at them like white like I've seen white boys all my life. Like that's that's not attractive to me. You know, mm-hmm. so they, they kind of want like anything, but like you know, like a white boy, right? So you know, so they go after the Asians, Latinas, and and the blacks, and so you know, I'm not saying that you know that's a good or a bad thing. That's not my point. But you know, when 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 you have white women say, "Oh no, we want Asian," and, or even black women in the city was like, "Oh no, we prefer Asian men," <clears throat> you know, but that's something that would never get televised, right? So it's you know uh instead it's it's so the opposite that it's polarizing to those who see it it's like wait what do you like the asian and it's like uh but it's it's normal like i grew up that's so normal <laughs> you know so uh. yeah but like also they always try to propagandate it as asian men only want to be with white women and then when yeah, no. asian men go for the white girls and the white girls are actually not what they think they are, then they're disappointed and they, then they want to come to the Latinas and the black women. It's like, no, 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 we weren't your first choice. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Like, it, it, like white girls was absolutely your preference. And then when, you know, Connie with the blonde hair was like, mm, no, you're mid, you're, no. you look weird when I- I don't know about me, friends. but- but yes, most of my Asian men, I can definitely vouch for that. Technically, they, they, yeah, they would go for a white woman first, and so that is very typical, and it's, it's terrible because I, you know, like like I said, we both, you know, Afro Asian. It's what we love. It's what we, you know, like I, I always try to push my my, uh, you know, my Asian friends to black woman more, you know, and and because they know, like that's you know probably my primary. Anyways, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but you know they've seen a lot of that, so to them. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's what Elvis into, blah, blah. But it's like, well, not necessarily. But, you know, sometimes, yeah, naturally, that's where the attraction is. Um, but, yeah, mm-hmm. no, but typically on the scale of, like, my friends, though, yes, very, very true. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and I think that that's, it says a lot more about their self-hate and how much they pedestalize whiteness and the sperm of white men than it does anything else. Like... Is that worse for Asian men or Asian women? <laughs> I think for both. Same thing right. with like black men that do that. Um, right. But I think that we're coming to a place where we're realizing that it's about relatability right. and it's about understanding. So dating people that just don't get it, regardless of if right. they're white, regardless if they're Asian or whatever they are, if they don't understand, like if me and you go out and you don't understand that someone's being silently racist towards me. Uh, if you can't pick up on that, why are we together? Right. Cause I want you to be able to go, honey, let's go. And I'm like, okay. Cause you get it. You get that whoever I'm talking to right now is low key side swiping me in some way because they think I'm beneath them because I'm a woman of color and they just, they just can't respect me. It's just like, like I, you always get to why do Asian women dig white men so much stuff? And I'm like, well, I mean, like you guys are, you know, they want to be part of the hierarchy. They want to be in the hierarchy. It's like, you guys put yourself in that seat. Like everything is, <laughs> everything is white, 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 right? You're all in magazines. But, but like, of course, like even someone from a third world country will look at that be like, yeah, I want, I want that. Right. Because that's, that's how you brand it. That's part of the fabrication. And so, you know, it's not like you have an Asian man on every newspaper and every media outlet and every TV show, like as like the head guy, right? Because, you know, then the roles might be different, right? So it's more of a societal thing than it really is. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it isn't an attraction either. I'm sure it is. But, you know, it's very different when, you know what I mean? When there's this, you know, you put you put someone in a different class and then be like, oh, why are they so attractive? Well, what, what do you think? Like, they're seen 99% of the time over everybody else, <clears throat> you know? But, it, and not only that, it's also like, they're, it, it, it's not even that certain races aren't, you know, on the pedestal. They're actually forced, you know, away from that, even when they were, you know? Uh, you know, because there was a lot of history of, you know, uh, black men back then being attracted that, you know, and now they had to, you know, and, and then were persecuted for that. You know, Asian men were attracted and were 
persecuted for that. That happened in film. That happened, yeah, you, know, you know, in the days of the army when, when you know, when when men used to take care of the army's wives, and then they started sleeping with Asian men. They started sleeping with Asian men, and the white men persecuted them, right? And then you know, Asian men were told, "You can't act next to white girls anymore because uh, you know that's offensive," um, and it's actually gonna, you know, um, it's gonna trend to be something popular, and we don't want that. I mean, it offends you in a way, but I never really put my energy to that. Like I said, all my circle have been very natural, you know, the way I've dated. Interracially, other women were just always attracted to me and I was always attracted to them. So I, it, I never, you know, the stereotype never really was a part of my life. Probably like some others, but, you know, it just it, it just sucks when some do go through that. I mean, I even yeah. have, I, I had a, I had a, 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 a Hmong woman of mine, she, she did a sex podcast, right? And she, and you know, and, and this is kind of how I feel too, but she goes, I, I don't, I, I do think white men are attractive, but she says, I don't, but I don't like Western white men. So she elaborated, she made it very clear. I go to Europe, I date Europeans. I, and, and to some people that might be like, what's the difference? But uh, it is very different because I feel the same way. Like uh, I would date a European woman who is still, I guess, what you consider white, over in a Western, typical, you know, blonde or whatever, you, here in the States. It's 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 a it's a very different thing, right? Oh, like yeah, being I know. a European, I, I did, a foreign, I Europeans. You, you know what I'm saying? It's very different. Like, though, they're, they're culturally very, very, very different. Western, yeah. Western woman in general. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they, big, they, they, they carry themselves differently. And very different. They, yeah much more attractive so for me it's definitely dating and in, in, in the west for me it's like right. dating a, a zombie <laughs> <laughs> like it's like dating a zombie there's really it's really nothing there right. um if i can't sit and... with you for two minutes you know like and still be engaged yeah like me and the girl was talking. go ahead it just feels like like they're sucking the life out of you and you're yeah. trying to suck the life out of them and it's like i don't want that kind of relationship right. i want to feel like we're, we're in a collaborative relationship or we're sharing culture which we're, we're sharing different point of views but like when you're here everybody kind of has the same point of view and i i try my best to preserve my unique point of views by by hanging out with people in my culture also staying connected to my culture but at the same time there's things about my culture that i do not necessarily love right. so yeah. i just try to have like a, a healthy medium with that and when it comes to love i even though like i don't necessarily love dating western people i still appreciate the freedoms we do have in terms of like being able to speak our mind about certain things and in, in the dating world and i do appreciate some of the i guess the 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 nuances of western society yeah. uh but like dating here i don't think that i could ever date a you know third generation american <laughs> Like I just, I just, Tough, right? I, have I tried? Yes. Did right. I enjoy it? Absolutely not. Like I did not enjoy it. Cause I felt like I was having spaghetti and not pasta. So <laughs> I know, like... to, well, I see, I, I used to have like a sexual addiction too, where, you know, I, I, I didn't value enough of who I was sleeping around with and things like that. Um, eventually, uh, when I gave my more myself more space, right, as far as abstinence and, you know, things like that, like, I'm starting to learn about semen retention. I want to know more about that. But anyways, um, uh, I, 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 I realized the more I took a break, you know, from sex, um, that I became what they call a sapiosexual. So, you know, a sapiosexual is attracted to the mind first. If you ain't attracted to a, you know, a woman's mind or intellect, you know, then there's almost no sexual attraction to the one, right? So, right. Um, that plays to what we were just talking about in the West, with the Western world is that, you know, there could be a bombshell that is an eight, and as soon as you open your mouth, you just drop down to a four like that fast, right? I could be with a four, but I'm like, she, she like, she, all right, you know, I'll, I'll take her out. And then as soon as you open your mouth, that intellect just, whoo, Right, that meter just went up to an eight. So you just went from a four to an eight. And you know what I mean? Like I can hold on to that instead of the 
You know, you, know, you, you can be a bombshell, but it's like, I can't stand to be with around you, right? So what you, you know. said is interesting because I think that that's what's happening in America right now. Even though people are saying it's more of a divide between genders, I think what's also happening is that because you've been so over-sexualized and saturated with this whole sex, 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 you, you, need it, you need to do it, you need to do it. It's so overdone now that now people are going into falling in love with the mind more, falling right. in love with the person's uh, actions and um, their integrity and their nobleness. Like they're falling in love with the things they're supposed to be falling in love with. And I'm sort of, I mean, it's sad that- It's also sexy. There. Yeah, and I mean, it's sad that it had to get there because we abused sex so much as people. But at the same time, it, it it needed to happen for people to understand, like, there's more to life, there's more to relationships than just intercourse. I mean, we even, you know, like, we're even at a point now, you know, where we're using, like, mental illness and anxiety and things as attraction. Like, it's sexy to be a little vulnerable now. It's sexy to be, you know, a, a, a little broken and, you know what I mean? Because it's sexy to see how people handle that, right? It's, it's sexy to see how, what their attitudes are with that and how the personalities pay, play, uh, play a part in that. You know, we're back then, sexual, you know, like, uh, what was, you know, it's just ass and titties and, you know, and you're cute and you're hot and... Everything sexy was just physical, but now it's like, you know, the language has changed. Like, no, the mental faculty, the spiritual faculty, but now sexy, right? So, yeah, the way people are, the way people manage uncomfortable situations and the way they grow and become mature people is what's becoming the new sexy being a bombshell with the perfect body or being a guy with the six pack and the M's and all that stuff, that's just not cutting it anymore. Especially because 49, I think now it's gone up to 60% of men have erectile dysfunction by the time they're 40. Okay. And women, you know, it doesn't matter how much plastic surgery you get. Eventually you're going to age. And so do men as well. And it's like, people are realizing like your body parts really don't last forever. Right. Like your essence is what's going to be worthwhile. You know what I'm saying? See, this this is also why like men find me really weird, right? You, you know how you said you had different types of looks, right? You have the, you know, you like the nerdy guy, you like the tough guy, you like, you know, like the pretty guy, blah, blah, blah. Um, when I go out with women, I, I, it's also like in different categories. Like <laughs> I'll have the girl that I just want to have dinner with. And then I have the girl that I just want to cuddle with. And then I have the girl, you know what I mean? That, you know, I'll, I'll take out in public. And then I have the girl that I just want to sleep with. And the girl that's just, you know, um, you're, you're my private, you know, person at home. Uh, and so I, it's like, I have different girls for different things, you know? And, and, you know, the guys would be like, well, why, why are you going to waste time with her? You know, like having dinner, you know, um, and you ain't even getting none, bro. And I'm like, you, you don't understand. I, I can get sex when I want to get, like, it's not a big deal to me if, but you know, I want to sit down time too, because I may not have that with this girl. You know what I mean? Maybe we just smashing in this, all right, good night, text, bye, bye, bye. So it's like, you know, I still, especially maybe because, you know, I grew up uh, in well, a- Well, men, men, men can't enjoy the moment. That's the issue. A lot of guys <laughs> cannot enjoy the moment. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and yeah, and, and I'm a big part of the sex community, right? And so I have different, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, like, I'm with a partner, you know, we go a little lighter. I want something more extreme. I'm not going to lie. I go hang out in the dungeon or something. You know, I want something intense. You know, like I, I, I see, you know, I, I, I join other communities where, you know, couples do things that, you know, are typically out, out in what Jock all the, uh, you know, not normal, um, completely normal to me. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's, yeah, like, you know, we have crowds that just, like, we do group cuddles, you know, I'll just go to parties and it's a cuddle party and it's just like, oh yeah, everyone just wants to get what they call an oxy a token high off each other and we're all just, you know, we're just locking arms and, you know, we're spooning and it, it's A cool. cuddle puddle. Cuddle puddle, if that's what you want to call it, right? So, you know, and, and like I said, it's also, I, I realized when I had a sexual addiction that, um, 
I also had, I don't know what to call it, but I, I, I also didn't know how to not be with one, right? Um, I grew up in a female dominated household. So I have all older sisters. I'm the baby boy and, you know, and the only boy. And so I, I think I got so used to and accustomed to just being with girls all the time. So mm -hmm. I started realizing that even when I, I, I did, cause I did practice abstinence for some time. Mm -hmm. um, that was very hard for me, but it did actually work for some time. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's uh, but I, I didn't, but then I still went on dates. And so I'm like, well, if you're not getting sex, you know, then, then, then why, you know, why are you still going out seeing women? And I realized that it, it, it was that attachment. Like, it, it, I, like I was uncomfortable. I didn't know how to be, I didn't know how to not be around women. So I also realized that that's another addiction then, <laughs> you know? So it was more beyond sex. It was just like, you, you need to be in a woman's presence all the time. So you got to learn how to deal with that. So. Yeah. Like maybe you, well, the thing is, is if you're a sex addict and then you pair that with being in a home that was more female dominated, um, you didn't really give yourself the opportunity to spend time alone with your mat, like with other males or your masculine self. It was like, this is something that was going to connect you being around women connects you to the feminine side of you. What? Versus you being able to stay within yourself and like spend time with yourself and tap into that without women being around. Like if I wasn't on a date, like at least once a week, yeah, that was like really, really, you know, like odd for me. And I, yeah, I wouldn't feel, I don't know. So. Um, I could go, I could go a while without dating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now it is not that constant, but I realized back at that time, that's how it was. But now, yeah, no, I, yeah. You know? Yeah, I could go a while without dating or like hooking up with anybody. Um, in fact, even like when I was looking for a secondary partner, um, I went out with several guys and I just had no interest in ho hooking up. Like I was just like, you're fine and stuff. Like I would meet basketball players, everything. And I'm just like, yeah. no, I don't care. Actors, no, I'm fine. Cause yeah. I really wanted a connection with someone that like it not just feels safe, but I wanted to feel, I wanted to feel the way you feel when you first fall in love as a kid. Uh -huh. I didn't want to just like be with someone cause they were hot and because they have, uh, you know, status. It was like, no, I really want to feel that nostalgia of like childhood. Uh, like oh my gosh i i just love sipping soup with you this is great like i i Eat just banana well, can pancakes <laughs> yeah i just i wanted that and you know thank god like i got out of that phase where i was boy crazy i left that boy crazy phase around 22 23 years old and even then i wasn't really that boy crazy but i got out of that phase at 23 because um, I, I, I definitely look into the future a lot. And what I was seeing was what is happening now. People were becoming so disconnected from each other. And I did not want to get to that point where I just couldn't connect anymore because I am sharing my time and my energy with people that honestly, I'm not going to see five years from now who are not going to visit me at the hospital. If I break my leg in an accident, like I just didn't want to waste my time with those people. See, like, that's where I was, but, but it was internally though, you know, it, it was, I was losing people and all that kind of stuff too. But the worst thing I, was, I was losing me. Right. You know, so when you're just seeking any type of pleasure, you know, and you're so used to that and that became your life, eventually you don't love yourself. Right. Cause you, you don't have any value, you don't have any morals, you're just looking for a good time. And so that was when I really had to step back. Like. Like I, I couldn't look at the man in the mirror anymore. I was sabotaging myself. I, you know, it, it yeah, like sex became like a drug. Like I just, you know, I needed it all the time. I didn't know how to, you know, like I didn't know how to deal with it. And I had to preserve myself. I, you know, I had to learn how to go without it. I had to really push myself. You had to preserve your dignity, whatever you had left. I didn't have a lot of that, right. And yeah. It was tough. It was tough, you know, and I, it, you know, and 
I just love me so much more now than I did back then. And so how can I love somebody else, you know? And this is why I've been single for so long because I didn't know how to love someone else. I didn't love me. So I had to get me in order, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I was ever gonna build better relationships and so. So do you feel like that's what's eventually gonna happen to men in the dating game? That they are going to either be so sexed out or they're going to continuously run into dead ends? with women and then they're gonna be like oh shit like i just met some girl and i can't even love her correctly because i don't even know what love is because i've never taken the time to love myself and value my own body and and you know what's weird it's just like so many guys will not admit that they've had stds and that they've done this and that and yeah. you know just because you don't tell anybody that doesn't mean that that doesn't affect you on a personal level um, and you go out there and a little piece of yourself and your self-esteem kind of lowers a little bit and then you're overcompensating by hooking up with more women mm -hmm. to feel like you're not dirty or feel like you're not unlovable and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of guys are going through that. It's been hard for men to accept that they're they're not they're unbreakable. Like like they felt like they were unbreakable for so long. Well and, but it's, and yeah. <laughs> And you're gonna meet your match at some point, right? But oh yeah, for so, sure. So for me, it was like right, and I, I at some point I started feeling like, you know, the some of the qualities that that woman feel. Right? I started feeling like, man, now I'm the one that is being. <laughs> I I feel like being used for sex now. I feel like okay, more women are contacting me than I'm contacting them now, and I, or, or I feel like you know, like man, is that all they want from me? Like sometimes, you know, like at first you're seeking it, right? And then now it's seeking you more, and you're like, okay. yeah, it's not fun when the bunny got the gun. It ain't fun, <laughs> right? So now it's like, oh, damn, this is how women feel like. Cause now I'm starting to feel like, damn, like I don't, feel, you know, I don't feel right anymore. Um, and so, but going off of that. In today's day and age, all right, body count seems to be an issue. Um, at your age, would you want, I mean, I'm sure there's a limit, right? Would you want a man who have a higher body count or a lower? I mean, of course, lower is the ideal, but is there any maybe, I don't know. Um, Do I have a criteria of like what, what body count I want? Like what? Would there be a reservation if a man didn't have enough body count? Would you assume maybe he's not responsible or, uh, excuse me, uh, experienced? Would that be unattractive? You know, uh, uh, think really as too much body count could be unattractive. I think it depends on the guy. So yeah. if the guy doesn't have, hasn't had a lot of sexual partners, but he's amazing in bed, he knows exactly what to say, what to do. Yeah. He's like extremely handsome and he's a go-getter. And like him having a, high body count or low body count really doesn't affect me. Now, if you're trash in bed and you have a high body count, I'm gonna be like, what is wrong with you? Right. Like, have you been lied to your whole life? Or I'm gonna be thinking to myself, if you have a low body count and you're also bad in bed and you're also bad at relationships, I'm gonna I'm gonna be thinking, you do not have enough experience to be with a grown ass woman. Right. Like, you need to be with someone who's a virgin. Like. You, someone that doesn't and doesn't feel like they could compare you to anything else. And the thing is, is like- so that can be a fact. Like low body count could show, could reflect, yeah, some unattractiveness no, in a man. Whether you have low body count or high body count, it doesn't make you a better right. lover. Right, right, right. Whether you have low body count, high body count, doesn't make you a better person or worse person. What I'm saying is if all the other qualities aren't there that make you right. a patch, then it doesn't matter what body count. You're just not it. Whether you got a bunch of women on the line, if your personality sucks, you're no fun, you're broke, right. you're not funny, right. you're a bad kisser, you have bad hygiene, it don't matter if you got 600 women that you've banged. Bye, I'm not interested. Right. And if you have four women that you've been with, great. But are you a good communicator? Are you, cause you could have four girlfriends in your whole life because you're a relationship type guy, but you fucked up all those relationships. So, so if he had a high body count, but, uh, but he did have all those qualities, you're, that doesn't, you're, you're not looking down on that, right? I'm not looking down on it. I'm like, give me your STD results. 
I need to see your STD results. And I also need to check your, you know, you need a psychological evaluation to see that you're good. Mm -hmm. And I also need to know how many of those encounters were consensual. Because here's the thing, a man that says he's been with 600, 700, 1,000 women, it's very hard. It is very hard for it to always have been consensual. Whereas, like I said, for the men that have had been, even for rock stars, Mm -hmm. look at the, the rock stars and the celebrities right now going down. You would think that they have all the access in, in the world to women where they didn't have to drug them, keep them barricaded in the house, put them in a fucking basement. They still did it. So I would have to, I would have to make sure that all of those, uh, those 600, 700, 9,000 women are consensual. Because the second I found out that one of them wasn't, bye. So there's skepticism there, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, I yeah, get it. I get it. But it's and not. The same th- and the same thing for a guy that's only had four. Because I'm like, you've only had four. Did you? What's wrong with you? Did you have to trick them into a relationship? Because why? Because why? Because uh, why only four? Uh, and you're so bad at relationships why only four and it's also so different like the body count if you just if the the discussion was between men and women is like two different reactions right so it's it's strange how that works out (laughs) so all my boyfriends have had low body counts so all my boyfriends have had three four girl girls that they've ever slept with in their life but i'm saying if we had this discussion about woman, um, you know, the male reaction will be a whole lot different than, you know, the way you just explained it, you know? Yeah, but I feel like that's because men are worried about being compared while women have always been compared to other women. So you comparing us, it's like, okay, whatever, next, you know, but for guys, it's more like, it's more about like this, this weird territorial thing where, where men don't understand that women get sex thrown at them so much. Right. We are the ones that can cheat whenever the fuck we want. Right. Like, we're practicing so much more self-control than you guys understand. Yeah. Like, I get hit on, like, a lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot. And and I have to be like, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Respectfully. No, thank you very much for the compliment. Respect. Even when a nigga's bad ass. When he's right. bad right fucking ass i might be poly but i'm not hooking up with dudes just because they say you're beautiful let me take you out to dinner what no i'm fine so like so i i don't think under, men understand how much harder it is for women to be faithful we no, really I, have to put our we really have to put our head down like we really have to put our head down y'all got a different kind of power than we do i mean you know what i mean it's yeah like i mean men there's there's a different receptiveness and so you know like that 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 feminine energy is very addictive and it's also like yeah like it's there's a difference between you know being more reluctant you know as as some males and you know like women having yeah women have a lot of self-control especially because you know the access is there more you know what i mean like men would access you any day right but you ain't gonna you know women don't access you know ain't trying to access men in the same energy sometimes and so it's kind of like what i tell all my married friends right they be like, oh, I'm faithful, you know, blah, and I'll never cheat. And that's cool. And I'm like, I respect that. However, I know a lot of y'all didn't have chances to cheat, first of all. Right? There's a difference between you accumulating chances and, you know, and yeah, that's a bad way to look at it. But it's like, you probably didn't cheat because you couldn't, you know what I mean? Versus, versus like you had chances to cheat and you still didn't. So are you truly faithful or are you just, you know what I mean? Or are you just, right. you know, it? Or it's just you haven't had the chances. To <laughs> right. Do. Exactly. So it's like, you know, right. So that's why I feel like men need to give us more credit because like, yeah, yeah. you know, easily in a week, we could go out, you know, dress in a basic long sleeve uh, yeah. with some khakis. Cause that's what I have on. And I'm going to get hit on at least 20, 30 times. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Gas station, Publix, at, you know, like the shoe store right. at the mall. And you might want it too, but you gotta, you know, you, you choose to refrain. So. And then I gotta put my, I gotta be like, mm. you know, like, I gotta act like I didn't just see this dude just do this whole, like, flexing <laughs> thing to get his, his milk jug from the thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, sir, I just saw you, fl- I get it. You got gains. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
So it's just like, I don't think men give women enough credit in that department. No, I, you know? I, I do. Cause like I said, I know I've been bad at it and you know, my self-control has very been very poor. And so for anybody, male or female, you know, to, to have that kind of restraint and discipline, it's, it's, it says a lot, you know, um, it, 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 it's a tough practice to be mm -hmm. honest. You know, it ain't like, you know, it ain't like a woman just don't want to sleep with men as much. It's like, yeah, they do. You know, it's just, you know, but they have, you know, they, they have to dig deep too, right? So. Well, no, they have to care about societal standards. Yeah, that. And uh, they and the pressures and the, the the judgment. But like for the most part, like I like, the reality is when I grew up, I'm from, I was born in the '80s, but like when our husbands or our brothers or our cousins or the males in our house would leave to go to work, we would go to the back and talk shit about being married, talk shit about having a like uh, not me, but like my aunts and stuff like that. My cousins, they'll they'll talk shit about what it's like to freaking be uh, taking care of a man hand and foot. And we'll talk shit about all that. And as soon as the men get home, it's like, hey, honey. That's what I wanted. That's what I didn't bring up. Else. That's what I didn't bring up about the polyamory relationship, right? Everybody hates on you when you say you're a poly. And they're like, oh, how could you blah, blah, blah. But yet those are the same people with the most miserable of all relationships i sit here man i'm at home with my friends and like i you know like i i go back to circles that i have left for a while i'm like dude like y'all look so sad right but yet y'all criticize my dating lifestyle you know that i get it i had trouble a lot of troubles with but i felt like i'm a lot healthier about it now but not only me i have friends that are very happy yourself right you know, you practice it in a very healthy way where you're, you know, where you respect, where you're consensual, it's fair, you're, you know, and, and, and you end up more happy. I have a lot of friends who do that. I mean, I have friends, you know, swingers and, you know, like I've been around some crazy friends. And so, but I'm like, but they look so happy. And I come to back to my, you know, committed long-term married friends and it's like, y'all pretend pretty well, but like y'all are not. Y'all can't well. really hide it. Oh, no. And you know That's what? Cute. Also, I meet a lot of women that are like, how could you be poly? Like, that's crazy. I could never do that. I'm like, sweetheart, you fucked like five different guys this month. You 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 know that, right? And, you mean you hide so, it better? And and three out of the, and three out of the five guys you fucked, you said, I'm pretty sure I'm in love with him. Right. And you literally had just met him from the dating app. So the fact that you're saying that me being Polly, who hasn't fucked anybody in a year, this is when I first got there, I haven't smashed anybody in a year, and right. you fucked five guys in five in, in, in literally five weeks. You're telling me being Polly is an issue, and you didn't even wear a condom. Right. Are we in the same planet here? Like, it's like what Woody Harrison <laughs> said in the movie A Natural Born Killer, <laughs> like. Uh, is is my moment of honesty worth more than you know than than the lifetime of your lies, right, or your insecurities, right? Um, I think he played in that porn movie too, didn't he? The where he was talking about like, I, I think that movie, the the message of that movie, I don't know if you know the movie I'm talking about. It released maybe ten years ago, where this you know when porn became highly like controversial. And a guy was standing up, he was talking about, but porn's very honest. It's in your face, it's direct. It says what it does, it, you know, like it says what it means, it means what it says. A lot of you guys, you know, that are trying to be against the porn industry and blah, blah, blah. But yet, you know, you do all these things under the surface. You're actually ruining marriages and households and you, you know, like it's like, so what's more pure and what's more, you know what I mean? And what's like, you know, I'm not saying I'm vouching for porn, but when you look at it from that standpoint, it's like, you know, it's, it's yeah. The same people talking very shit about honest porn. Approach. Are they, the same not, people talking shit about porn corruption. are are using porn to escape their marriages. The same right. people talking shit about porn are the same people that, when they go out, they fantasize about that chick that just passed by them with the fake tits and be like, oh, I, I wish, you know, uh, I wish my wife looked like that. And then they go home and they watch a porno about women that look like the woman that just passed by them. Right. And and so it's just like. I don't know. A lot of people just want to be moral ground thumpers. They want to be holy thumpers. And it's like, 
let's be real like a lot of y'all don't have integrity let's let's be honest a lot of y'all not honest people and so when i when i had that conversation with a few of my homegirls that were saying oh i could just never be poly i'm just like sweetheart what you're saying is that you could just never let anybody know that you are sexually free with your body because you are so up the patriarchal standards ass yeah. that you're willing to lie to a dude. You're willing to go out on a date with a man and he's going to ask you, when was the last time you had sex? And you're going to say, I haven't had sex in three years. Or they lie that they're not married and things like that. No. Or they lie that they've, they lie about hooking up with five guys this month. Like, you'll be like, how many guys you've been with? Oh, I've only been with two, yet you've been with 30. There's no problem with that. My problem is, is that you are so up the patriarchal standards ass that you rather lie than be authentic to yourself. A dude asked me, a dude asks me who I've been with, what I've done. I'm going to be like, listen, I can tell you, if you don't like it, it is on you. Right. Right. And I, I tell them. Very honest too, right? You know, like I can't control what a woman, what information she gives me, but I can control, you know, myself. And so, you know, I know I've never been a homeworker. Like that's not my goal. You know, even if I had chances, you know, if I've ever been lied to, I don't know if I slept with someone's wife. If I if I did, I wasn't told, right? So, you know, uh, or, you know, or at least not consensually, right? Like I mean, there's some men who consensually want you to sleep with their wife. That's a whole different topic. You know, but, uh, you know. What's interesting also to me is like, so I'm poly and a lot of people expect me to act a certain way. Like they think, like if I tell them I'm poly, they think that I'm going to go to the club. I'm going to make out with like randoms. Yeah, right. I'm going to hook up with you the first night. I'm going to drink a bunch of Because people don't them. explore these lifestyles. They don't yeah, know. I'm just going to I'm just gonna snort some yayo yo with you, and then we're gonna like make out in the bathroom and the right. stall. Like they expect me to be this person. I'm like, I am literally the most boring person. And then when guys actually get to know me, they're like, Are you sure you're Polly? Because like you don't. It's not giving Polly. It's giving regular relationship, and you just haven't found the one. I'm like, No, 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 no. I just connect with people. But in order to practice any type of romanticism. I don't just think someone's attractive and have a, a, a martini and some frozen chicken bites from Fridays and think, oh yeah, let me just go home with you. Right, they think we're out of control and undisciplined and that, you know, we just want to smash around and it's not that right. at all. Actually, when I did practice abstinence, what got me back into being sexually active again, you know, was because I found a support system. I got, you know, I, I discovered that there were sex communities where people shared the same values, you know, and, you know, um, you know, like, so polys, right? Like even like swingers and things like we're very, they're very respectful. You know, we, we uh, you know, the, 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 the typical person from, you know, uh, outside of the scope would think, oh, that's so out of control, blah, blah. But it's like, it's actually very respectful circles. People love one another, they're consensual, they check in, they follow up, like there's accountability. Like, yeah, boundaries, very, aftercare. Boundaries, right. Like, you know, like, you know, like you, you really have to ask these questions. You really, you know, and afterwards you really have to, there's self care and like, there's all this kind of stuff. Like people truly, truly like actually like, you know, I mean, there's always bad apples, of course, but for the most part, it's like, you know, like these people, like they're very human about this kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. the maturity and intelligence it is. It's not like what y'all think, well, oh yeah, everybody just goes to the club and smashes. Like, you know, I'm mm -hmm. sure there are circles like that, you know, and like not everyone's the same. But, you know, in the right support groups, like, that's how it is. Like, whether you're, you know, sharing partners in, a, in all these different things, but it's not mm -hmm. out of control or wreckage, you know? Like, it's actually very done, very organized and very specific and facilitated, you know, things like that. People get kicked out. People get, you know, like, you can't, you know? Yeah. Like, people get, yeah, like, yeah, like, you can't, you, you know, like you can't be around this anymore. You will be dealt with you. There are penalties and all this stuff to it. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not what people think at all, you know. I don't get, I'm not into any sex communities because I just, like, I'm, I don't really have, like, desires to have sex like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, so, like, my partner, he's very cerebral. Like, he, 
he cares for sex, but it's not like, like it's just not like his priority. Like he just doesn't, he'd rather read a book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He'd rather listen to a four hour history lesson of, you know, of the world and like science or something. So like, yeah, like I'm not in any sex communities, but you know, I appreciate that they're there so people can explore their sexuality and so they right. could understand a little bit more about what they find. Um, I mean, what what they feel is purposeful or what they feel is sacred to them or special to them about sex. And, you know, maybe monogamy isn't necessarily that. Right. And so I appreciate those things. Um, and that was the I thing. Think- like, that was the best... I, I, I'm not encouraging it and like and I don't I'm not around it as much as I used to be but that was almost like the perfect segue for me you know if I was gonna return out of abstinence again like you know it was the perfect way to you know that okay so you're saying that I don't have to change too much about myself I just change how I do things right change how I mm-hmm. bond about things and, and, and be a better you know version of you know what I already was that that I know that in turn is gonna ch- you know change me even more right like I said I'm so much better about it today but yeah you go ahead you're gonna say something like how do you feel about the BDSM community because it's something that I absolutely want no parts of <laughs> yeah I, you know it, it, it's the same thing you know it's very respectful it's very you know like you can just go and voyeur if you want you know there's people in there who have done nothing. You know, they just go, they warrior, they explore. So it's a part. It is an exploration. It's 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 a fucking giant museum. Of, you do get to know what you like and you don't like. There, it's you know, um, touch what you want to touch. Don't don't touch what you want to touch. And so I I, I think, you know, it, it's almost like people talk about MMA and you know you know the fight scene and things like that. I'm like, not not everyone is the same. There's a different energy to every person. Some are, some grew up more aggressive. Some, you know, like you know, like things more intense. And there, I think everything has a you know, should have a, a particular scene or you know, should have you know. But I think everything should also have a ceiling as well. Like there no, needs to be a. I, I do a understand. Cap. There needs to be a cap. That's what, like I said, when I'm around it, yeah, I have a cap. You know, I can't speak for everybody else, right? But I've seen the BDS as, as, as seen, and I don't participate in a lot of it at all. Most of it has been voyeuring. It's sometimes to me, it's just a hangout. You know, it's like going to any other club. You know, it's just that there's a lot of sexual shit right. happening, right? But it's just like it, for a while it became my hangout. I didn't touch a lot of the things they were doing. I wasn't pissing on people and beating people, you know, with rods. Um, you know, uh, I, I I didn't come out with a black <laughs> eye or being cut, right? But 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 you know, um, I got comfortable because I was in the sex community, so it was just like another way, you know, like another environment to be around and so like, okay cool that's what y'all do and you know like and you're all my friends in a way so i got comfortable with being around it but i did mm. but i did have enough of a cap to where i didn't participate in a lot so i've seen okay. a lot of crazy shit i just didn't do it all you know right but you're right i i think with my upbringing that there's definitely been a cap for me you know yeah and so i can share yeah like to me like in, in you know, memory in polyamory, the cap should be if you're not using protection. Like, if yeah. you're not using protection, you're not getting regularly tested, all that. If you're not, if you're having sex and having children and not taking care of those kids and you're getting into polyamorous relationships, you should not. Like, that you should gotta be You got to consider you're another part of it too, right? You owe it to them, right? Yeah. Um, Married men or no? Am I into married men? No. no, no like, yeah, your, your poly relationship is never with another married man, right? So, like, my last partner, he was married. Hmm. Um, okay. But she was she was already poly. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, she, she already had, like, three, four partners. Okay. That was the only time? Yeah, that was oh, the no, only you stay time. Away from, yeah, from non-poly married men, you stay away. Yeah, I don't, I don't do married poly men. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. Not interested in that. And, you know, like, I feel like when I get married, I'm not going to practice polyamory, even though I'm polyamorous. I'm just not going to practice it because I just don't, like, once I get married, I just feel like I want to focus on just my individual person and building my life with that. So that's why I want to be very sure 
about getting married. And that's why I haven't gotten married yet to my current partner because I yeah. want to be absolutely sure that I could be, I could practice monogamy with him and it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. Like I don't People want don't to understand, right? Like everyone lives, to everyone lives through phases. Like this doesn't mean we do this forever. You know what I mean? I don't, well, the thing is I'm always going to be polyamorous. Right, that's right. like at heart. Yeah, yeah. I'm always going to be polyamorous, but like when you really love somebody and you know that monogamy is something that's going to make them feel safer, whether emotionally or just like secure them more in the relationship, mm -hmm. I will absolutely be monogamous, but it cannot be a sacrifice to me. It needs to naturally be that. And yeah. I'm, and I'm good. Like if it naturally flows out of me. Yeah. You want to think like, about that too, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> where did that come from that's zoom for you <laughs> have you ever practiced tantra like tantric yoga like actually yeah when i was younger i was definitely into it cool. um and i did actually in, in feel like orgasmic and things of that nature i think that i mean it works for some people i could probably get back into it but i, I would have to be it would have to be with somebody that's very much uh, someone that understands sex on a very I, I always say tantra is like the like the sexual gateway like how they say weed is the gateway to drug like I you know like once you really get to tantra then you explore then that's when you go off and explore but you know um like that's like that that is that gateway barrier you know that really really releases yeah I think I think it, yes with to what you're saying but yeah. I feel like people like for me to practice that with anybody like you would have to have a really baseline carnal understanding of sexuality mm -hmm. and like so I haven't really met anybody that I have that type of connection with mm -hmm. and I think it's because like I said I sort of date people that are more cerebral people that are much more brainy and like sex is kind of like I don't want to say that sex is beneath them, but that's like to them, it's just not a priority. It's not something that they really care about. I get it. Yeah. Which is interesting because I'm a very sexual person, yet right. I choose yeah. those kind of guys. It's so weird. I, I might be kind of that way too. It's like there's a different sentim sentiment, you know, with, with, with women. I mean, I want them to be sexual, but, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's sometimes like when I get into actual like important relationships, I feel like the the woman is always more sex like you know more sexual than I am. Um, even though I know naturally that I probably am, but for some reason it's different when I'm actually into someone. Then I then it's less about sex for me. You know you know like it, it's weird how it takes it out of you like that. So you know. yeah, but I feel like for women because we are you know persecuted for being sexual when we meet somebody that's really into yeah, us and we're really into them we want to exhaust our like our sexuality with them because yeah. a lot of time we keep it restrained for so long you know what i'm saying so like i always tell guys when you find a woman that's crazy about you that wants to have sex with you like non-stop just accept it yeah i do see just that accept like it. It. You finally Except have that safe space to be not to not feel shameful, right? Like someone is okay with this. Like I can just, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. And, and, and I then, do. Get, you know, I, I give the women men, a lot of that space. I love it. I men love it. push it. Some men push it away, and then they're crying in their yeah, yeah. 40s and 50s. Oh, my wife doesn't want to touch me, or oh, I don't. I can't find a girl that wants to fuck, dude. Every girl that you've had that wanted to fuck, you've shamed her for wanting to fuck. Like, right, what right, is right. your problem? It's weird. It's such a weird thing. So like dating today, um, I think that where we're at right now is that, so the, the, the dating apps, a lot of the people on the dating apps are straight up psychopaths and people that are avoidance. And I feel like avoidant people are the worst people to date. Yeah, I'm not in that scene. So yeah. And then for the people that are in the real world that are not on dating apps, um, I think that they're, they're, reorganizing themselves and learning how to romantically socialize themselves better. And it's easier that they're not on these apps to do so. Because like when you're on these apps, you have all these distractions, but when you don't have them and you're in person, they're, they're learning, they're talking, they're, they're, they're getting 
they're getting better at it. But when we, when they meet these people that are on dating apps that are used to just computer, 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 dating app, dating app, and then you have the people that are not using it and they're coming together, there's so much disconnect. I get that. I get that. Yeah. And so that's what I think the dating world is right now. I think that people are going to either they're going to completely move away from dating apps or they're going to find dating apps that are going to make the connection stronger, which is like being able to dating apps that are only webcam based, you know, like. Now I see where we were conflicting in the beginning. Yes, I agree with what you're saying. I think what I was just trying to say was that I, I appreciate a profile. That's all because it helps me, you know, break the ice easier than you know, wasting a lot of time exploring, but you're right. But once you do get into it, yes, I think a lot of what you just said happens as well. So that's the other side of it that is like, you know, even if a profile looks pretty, you know, you that might not be what you get in person, right? Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I feel like that's what's gonna happen. There's gonna be like dates that are gonna be, so dating apps that are gonna be like, oh, you would have to do just webcam. It's not like, you know, that whole chatting thing anymore. Like it's gonna, I feel it's gonna become more intimate because yeah. women are too scared and men are, you know, men and women are scared of getting their heart broken, checking out, you know, going on a date with somebody that's a, t a total creep or a liar or catfishing you, you know? In, so in, in going with that, like what I said before, I think that marriage is becoming less relevant, right? And so, you know, because I've been like single, you know, 90% of my adult life, uh, probably more than that but you know it's it's like i know these kids are gonna date more and more without marriage in mind right and because of that it's gonna develop into something more social you know like like a life like lifestyle so what we're talking about so w w with my openness to talk about this kind of stuff isn't to encourage anything necessarily you know, like I said, all you know, yourself or someone like you. I just want people to find their tribe so that, hey, we're already doing this. Who can we, you know, where are the others like us that, you know, we can associate with? That's why I choose to come out and talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. like, your parents probably ain't going to talk to you about it. So, you know, there are some of us out here that, you know, have lived through it. So that's yes. my truth. Yeah, I, I hope to see dating in the future. Uh, become better once women also kind of let go of the dating apps and allow men to romantically socialize themselves outside of the computer and then also these dating apps become a lot a lot more innovative and more intimate because it's still it's 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 just not hitting the mark it's definitely giving right. facebook myspace still like we need a more intimate level of 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 dating and connecting because it's just not working and and people will stall on cam they'll stall on voice notes for as long as they can so there got to be apps where it's like no this is mandatory you got to get on the camera and you got to get on the thing or talk one or the other you ever get someone who like doesn't understand something but just smiles because they you know they feel like uh, I just I just smile because I don't know you know like it, it's kind of like that's what it is like the topics we talk about you know like I, especially in the Hmong community like with you know a lot of my peers you know if Polly is being talked about like speed even speed dating and you know things like that are, people just like oh like they'll just crack jokes you know because it's, it's better to laugh off about something I don't understand than to feel like I don't understand it or or it's better to laugh about something that I, I want to tap into but don't get chances to so you kind of just laugh it off like oh like you know it's just funny but you know I know there's a deeper mourning or wanting of like you know I, I would like to participate in that or I would like to know a little bit more about that but they're not daring enough to even come out right like mm -hmm. you know like a lot of Hmong girls you know when the movie 50 shades of gray came out like they all went to go see it right but once you talk right. about bdsm then they're like oh no we don't want them to do what bdsm why did you watch the movie <laughs> you know and actually liked it so it's like you're there's something you're hiding because it's like it's there's two different energies it's like you obviously saw the movie you know which is you know like in the bdsm world to them that's like that's that's like a kid movie like to them right that's very like 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 they don't understand what a dungeon really right. is um, but right. So it's like, yeah, y'all can act and laugh this stuff out and act like, you know, it's nothing to you, but it's like, come on, it shows, you know, so. <clears throat> yeah. So behind. Yeah. <laughs> and for like, and for black women and Afro Latin women, I think that dating is like, 
also changing for them because they're because men are also realizing that you know you can date women of whatever preference you have and whatever hierarchy thing that you think exists but you're really a lot of men are just they're putting they're what they're really putting on the pedestal is social currency they're putting on the pedestal um kind of like what's it called they're putting on this pe pedestal the imagery of and the propaganda and the commercials of these people they're putting these things on a pedestal but when they get into these relationships with a lot of these women who have such a um they also have their own hierarchical undertones right mm -hmm. they're so out of touch and so not connected and they lack a lot of empathy because they think oh well i'm blonde no because my hair's straight no because i'm light-skinned and no because i'm that like a lot of these women are not that nice and right. black women and afro latinas have had to really had to they really have had to look at everybody and kind of babysit everybody's feelings and do you feel like they shoot other men down sometimes or? uh black women and and, uh, and the type of woman you're talking about i feel like the the, the non-black women no, just in general, like those type of women. Like you were talking about the hierarchical type. Do they shoot men down? Yeah. I feel like not only do they shoot men down, but I feel like these women lack a lot of empathy and understanding. So when these men get with them and they're like, oh, wait, these women don't really, they're really not as nice as we thought. Mm -hmm then they want to come around to the the black women and it's like don't take our sweet ride or die personality for weakness and so that we're we're going through this circle but i think over time the men that really do the work to understand black women and what we've been through and afro latinos and even asians of color all that stuff when they, when they really get it they're going to really tap in like into a world of not just understanding, but like a genuine family that genuinely fucks with you. Like that will really hype you up. Now, when you say hierarchical, do you just mean personality wise or also wealth wise? Race. Race. Okay. Wealth. Uh, social currency, what you see on TV, the imagery. Because it's funny, but there's an opposite approach to that. Like on a hierarchical side, you do get these rich women that like don't, they live secret lives, right? Well, they'll keep, I guess, guys below them around, you know, like pretty much as pets, right? To, you know, like, but, but, but they don't want to be seen in public with you, right? So they'll, they'll keep random dudes around and never talk about it. You know, um, don't, it's, yeah, it's almost like, it's like their, like, their dirty little secret. Yeah. Like, like they, 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 they want men as pets, you know what I mean? To, to like be around, but they don't want anything serious from it. And, you know, to, to help them with t tasks and, you know, I mean, like, it's, it's kind of like their, their little scapegoat, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, y'all are weird. Like that's, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, you, you do that. <laughs> You do have the woman who do that too. Like they, they, they make you like the closet boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? And they have you on all the time, but but, but nobody. But else. you know, it, it's them. <laughs> it's those guys. It's those guys that allow it. Just like yeah, the women that allow it. Like y'all are allowing this. Right. You just gotta know your worth. It's like, why don't you just pay for a service then? Like it's it's fine. You know? Exactly. Like. Yeah, I think everybody's coming to a place where they're realizing being boy boy crazy and girl crazy isn't really that worth it. Right. They're realizing that valuing your body and your dignity is absolutely on the top of the list and that you only get one body. And if you think it may not happen to you, it can happen to you. You could be in very unsafe situations, put your body in very fragile, unsafe situations, and you could end up building a family with somebody that fucking hates you. Right. So, you know, it's just too much to risk. Or so, nothing. 
And it all starts with a, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Through text. It all starts like that. I like your pick. Oh, you like snowboarding? And then you guys go on a date, and before you know it, you can end up in a in a, in a in a five year shit show with someone. I guess this is our show. We've been here for a while. We're gonna do a part two. We need a some, name to someday. We'll, we'll but, come up with a name. Too. <laughs> yeah, we'll come up with a name. All right. Thanks for joining our show. We're gonna do a part two coming soon. Make sure to like. Yes. Comment. Subscribe. And we're out of here. Once again, Bye. say your name. What? Say your name <laughs> once again. Shoddy. It's Emo right. Shoddy. Hello. Elvis Tao. And make sure you visit our pages once in a while. Afro-Asiac Dating and Latinas and Asian Men. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. All right.